Good morning, Michelle Saxman here, and ready to share with you some time with Jesus Calling by Sarah Young on December the 29th. This is an exchange policy. Um, as much as we kind of open our hands to receive is what he's going to pour in. So when we have a clenched fist and we're frustrated about things and we're declaring our independence and putting our flag in the ground, you guys, very little can fit in through those cracks and crevices. But when we fully open our hand to believe and receive, he can fully pour in and fill. Trust me with every fiber of your being. Every cell in our body was designed to crave the oxygen. By his great design, what he breathed in, breathing life into Adam, that is our cells, our design by him, our creator and our savior. Every cell was designed to crave his presence. Every cell was designed to crave that oxygen. And he says, trust me with every fiber of your being. But it's going to be proportional. As much as you rely and depend on me, I will pour in and fully fill you. So making sure that we're not just coming to him in conversation when in those season of adversity and those trials and des desperation and desolation, but rather that communion for me now is continual union, continual communication. It is not that daily communion, weekly communion, monthly communion, whatever it is that you do through your church and your congregation as you gather in thanksgiving and communion. I'm all in favor of that. But today, for me, communion is about developing a relationship, trying to be in right relationship, right order with my creator and my savior. The readings for today, the first one is Psalm chapter 40, verse 4. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust, who does not look to the proud, to those who turn aside to false gods, knowing who our maker is. I say, know who you are, know whose you are, and building this trust muscle with our Heavenly Father, looking back on our past, not for the times that we have fallen and missed the mark, where we have sinned and led astray, but rather looking for the times where he has lifted us out of that pit of self-pity the seasons that he has carried us through. Looking back at that, blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. The next reading is Psalm chapter 56, verses three and four. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? A Psalm of David. And just think about those times. We know that circumstances, adversity is a guarantee. We live in a fallen, broken, fractured planet. It, there is war and starvation and economic despair. So it says, when I am afraid, I will trust in you. Know your source. Know who you are. Know whose you are. I will praise your name. And then acknowledging that feeling, the fear that comes in, and then seeking that internal state of stillness and peace. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortal man do that our Heavenly Father, He is our true source of peace and joy and love. The next reading is Psalm chapter 62, verse 8. Trust in Him at all times, O people. Pour out your hearts to Him, for God is our refuge in all times, in the good and the bad, in the ugly. Uh, when we're in the pit, seek him. And I think it's that thing that's always up to us, our free will, seek, knock. And I think in this beautiful season, this Christmas season, um, at least in one of the church services I listened to online, and they're talking about how much joy, even the most curmudgeon person looks into the face of a newborn baby and they begin to smile. We can't help but smile reflect that miracle of life. So trust in him at all times. Pour out our hearts and acknowledge he is our safe haven. He is our refuge and source of strength. The final reading is Isaiah chapter 26 verses 3 and 4. You will keep in perfect peace him whose mind is steadfast because he trusts in you. Trust in the Lord forever for the Lord, the Lord is the rock eternal. The mind is steadfast, you guys. Mindset is something we talk about. We kind of throw it away in all these self-help books, a mindset. But when we set our mind toward his will and light and peace, the fruits of the spirit, 
We're going to receive that discernment. Those feelings are going to pour back through when we're feeling afraid and fear, doubt, worry, blame, shame, regret, remorse, all of those things that are of the culture that keep us in the grave and in the pit of self-pity. We can shift, the shift that perspective by seeking trust, gratitude, thanksgiving, when we start thanking our Heavenly Father for the gifts, looking at the larger picture, all of the things in His creation that are working well, not the few little areas of chaos that man is causing or the conflict that we might be feeling internally or in a relationship or something like that. You will keep the perfect peace whose mind is steadfast. So making sure we're using that push pin that we know in the quadrant living, if we're anchored, to the kingdom, even though we're swinging and clinging or we're drifting, but we know where our anchor is, or are we in the culture filled with fear, doubt, worry, blame, and shame? You will keep the perfect peace whose mind is aligned with our creator and our savior. So trusting with every fiber of our being, learning to listen to our body, the neurochemistry, the short, shallow breathing, shoulders up in our ears, when do we need to take these deep diaphragmatic breaths to calm our mind, change the neurochemistry, change the conductor of the brain train, get back to that station and make sure it is the Holy Spirit. So y'all have a super blessed day. Stay connected to the vine and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.